Hello art historians. Today's video is about um, getting us going in the school year. Uh, we talked a little bit on our group call about um, our Zoom expectations and what I'm hoping that you will uh, think about when you're um, engaged in listening and um, engaged in Zoom. I'd love for you to be on time. Keep your microphone muted unless you have a question, but definitely un unmute your mic when you want to ask a question. Make sure you're in a quiet place. I'd love for you to turn your video on. It makes it a lot easier for me to understand um, whether or not you're getting uh, getting it. Uh, make sure you're paying attention, be willing to participate. It will be a, a class participatory sort of thing. I'm gonna need you to analyze and talk about your analysis. Make sure you're raising your hand to share so that it makes it a little easier for me to know who I'm calling on. Come prepared. If I give you something to preview, please make sure you do that and be respectful of me, of your classmates, of our time and our material. So I'm gonna go back to our modules and look at the next thing, which is we talked about how uh, we're gonna come back to how to take photos with a Chromebook. Um, sometimes you will uh, need to fill something out on paper and you're gonna to wanna to figure out how to turn that into me. And some of you can take a picture with your phone, but if you can't take a picture with your phone, I'm gonna teach you how to take a picture with your Chromebook. Please make sure you're working on getting your, your getting to know you survey done. This is a review for those of you who were absent. These are our points for um, marking period one. Uh, as we see it laying out um, uh, in this uh, virtual learning platform. So you will be able to look at this. We're going to do methods and visual analysis, um, and that's what we're gonna be working on this second week of school. Then we'll do global prehistory, which is uh, 28,000 BCE uh, through about 1500 BCE. Then we'll do ancient Mediterranean, the Near East, so Sumeria and the Persians, um, Babylonians. Uh, we'll do Egypt, Greece, and Rome. And finally, we'll do indigenous Americas, um, uh, and that's Alaska, Canada, um, Native American uh, tribes from um, North Amer all of North America, including um, uh, uh, the Aztecs, um, and then working our way down into uh, South America for the Inca. Um, so we have uh, the Inca and the Maya. So we have a lot to do. Um, you're going to take notes every day, and I will grade those notes at the end of the marking period. We're going to do an in-class little exit card on the oldest human form. We're going to do an in-class exit card when we finish the Near East, and you'll do a bulleted idea of um, an essay. Um, as I told you in class, there will be no real essay writing until at least second marking period when you have enough stuff under your belt to write essays about. Out. Your nine block matrix is going to be another video how to analyze that, but you will need to do a nine block matrix for each of the subunits. So that's going to be really important. And that's one of those things that you may want to um, uh, take a picture of with your um, with your cell phone or with your Chromebook. And we will get to that. Um, and then you will have a test on each of the three units that we will be uh, completing. So as we go back to our modules, um, we looked at our calendar and I'm just reviewing, as I said, the things that we did in class in case you were absent um, and you need to, um, or you need to refresh your memory. So this is our general long range calendar. Um, it may shift depending on how long it takes us to do things. And that's really because we are in a, um, an environment where I'm not sure how long it's gonna take us. This is our standard marking period one layout of when we will get to certain things. And again, this may have to move depending on um, how quickly we make our way through units or how slowly we make our way through units uh, due to our new virtual platform. So I do need to um, have the syllabus and calendar check from everyone. And that means that you looked at the calendar, you looked at the syllabus, and then you're sending me an email that says, I am in on level and I would like to stay there. I am in AP and I would like to stay there, or I'm in AP and I would like to drop down to on level. Um, I just need to know where you wanna check in. Okay, we will come back to the nine block, but for right now we'll do our favorite and helpful links. Um, this is one of my favorite pages on here because it really does take you to a lot of important things that will be helpful for you. Glossary for um, art terms, videos about important artifacts, resources for each unit, a database of the historical events that were taking place at the time as collected by Fordham University. Um, uh, how we came up with colors before there was Pantone. 
seriation, which is about how we're able to tell the date of something based on um, how many pots there are and what they all look like and what the changes to the pottery is over time. We'll look at architecture, Google Arts and Culture is a wonderful place. The timeline of art history from the Met is wonderful. And Khan Academy is your greatest resource. Um, it has information on almost all, I think all 250 artworks that we will study this school year. So that's a really important place to go as far as um, helpful links. A book of supplemental information, this is a place for you to click on that will walk you through any questions that you may have if you need a refresher on something that I went over. This is really like uh, the glossary at the back of your book. And it handles things like um, important definitions. It talks to you about what all 250 artworks are and it puts them into the unit they belong in. So you can sort of get an overview of where we're headed. This is a huge file even as a, a PDF. Um, so it may take a little while to load, but it's really helpful because after it talks about um, each one of the things, it um, this is not applied to you this year because you don't have a textbook and I'm not going to issue you a textbook. Um, it's just a, a lot of issues. So anything with that yellow textbook highlighting, you can ignore that because you are, um, you're doing the virtual thing. If you had the textbook, it would tell you where this object is in the textbook and how to read something that is similar to it. Um, it's not a big deal. This is your basic vocabulary from the College Board. It's only uh, two pages long. It's really easy. We will talk about this in depth. These are the, you know, the most important vocabulary words. And then you get into, here are some links to um, summaries and things like that from our textbook that you should be able to um, access that are sort of reviews as we do um, these individual units. Um, and you do have access to that even though you don't have the textbook. Then what I did was I put all of the artworks into major periods and movements. So it tells you Neolithic and Paleolithic and it lays out the items, the major examples of the items from each of those time periods. And um, it takes you through a highlight of everything. It doesn't um, do all 250. Then we move on to the elements and principles, which we will talk about in great detail. Um, elements like line and form. And if you've taken an art class before, you know your elements and principles. If you haven't, we'll go over them. We'll talk about shape and perspective. I'm not going to jam all of these vocabulary words down your throat at the beginning. We'll sort of explore them as we work our way through the curriculum, looking at things like color um, and and what the difference is between a shade and a hue and a tint, what the difference is between complementary and analogous colors, and we will talk about saturation and things like that. We will also talk about texture, and then we'll get into the principles of art and design, which are things like proportion and scale, how big things are compared to the things that are around them, and the way that a, a composition is constructed. We'll talk about there needing to be balance in a construction of a composition, either asymmetrical or symmetrical, and these are things that you will learn, but but this is a place for you to go back to and use as a resource. If I use a, a word and you're thinking about it while you're at home and you can't quite remember what it is, but you're not sure you want to email me, you can use this. Come back here and, and review some of the important words and phrases that are in here. Medium is the kind of things that art is made out of, whether we're dealing with pencils or charcoals or paints or inks, that, that's what this section. So that's what this supplemental book is. It just is a way, um, if you get confused about something, you wrote something down in your notes, you wrote aquatint in your notes, and you're not really sure what an aquatint is, um, you can Google it or you can come to our supplemental book. Okay. We just did these in class, but I'm just gonna do a quick overview for you. We're working our way through looking at art. And what we started with is our first PowerPoint, which is about art history. And it's, its job, this PowerPoint, is to really talk to you about what is the reason to study art history, why do we study art history, and what is it's important to us culturally. Um, my internet is going incredibly slowly, um, so I'm having a little trouble pulling this up, but it asks you to think about what are um, some of the jobs that you can do with an art history degree? What are some of the reasons for getting an art history degree? Um, and it, it asks you to examine um, really what 
the reason for studying the things that we're going to study. Um, you can do curatorial work where you'd help decide what's going to go to an exhibit. You can help an art gallery do their marketing. Um, you can go into art therapy if you wanted to work with special needs adults. You can do tourism where you become a tour guide. Um, I have two students enrolled right now in law school and art history because they're going to do art law, which is a restitution of artworks that were stolen from families during World War II and the attempt to get them back to their original owners. You know, we learn all of these things as we study art history. We learn about geography and religion and anthropology and governments and historical events. We learn about the correct uh, vocabulary for discussing things. We're using BCE and CE instead of um, BC and AD because we're trying to use a non-religious way of describing time. Um, we will talk about who made art and why we made art. Um, and we will talk about this idea of context, what, what was going on in the world um, at the time. So that's that first one that's there. And we talked about that in class. So again, this is a review for anyone that was absent um, or for you, if you just want to remember what we said, what is art history? This PowerPoint really is about um, what units we're going to study and what exactly qualifies as art history. And that means we're looking at time periods, we're looking at places across the world, we're looking at different um, types of artists, we're looking at religious art, we're looking at non-religious art, we're looking at propaganda art, um, we're examining all kinds of things pictorial art, we're talking about three-dimensional sculpture, we'll, we will talk about architecture, we will talk about craft, and that is things like glass and pottery and um, fabrics and things like that. We will look at these and many other units. We want to think about why things were made, and we will examine everything from prehistory all the way up through modern art. And we sort of talked about what we think our favorite unit will be um, and why we think that might be, and we wonder if maybe our favorite unit that we think about in September might actually be a different unit um, that becomes our favorite by the time that we're done in May. Um, and so we, we will examine you know, 30,000 years of art uh, from across the world. And so there's lots to look at and lots to think about. So if you were absent, the way that you can make up your absence is by making sure that you review this PowerPoint and letting me know which one of these units you think is going to be your favorite and why that is. Um, then we get into the beginning of analysis. We talked a little bit about this in class. We talked about how we're going to look at artworks and how we're going to um, examine it, the questions we're going to ask and things like that. Um, and so we will talk about what's going on in this painting. How does this painting make you feel? Does this painting make you feel uncomfortable? Does this painting make you feel a little anxious? Why might that be? What's going on in here that you know helps to underscore that? feeling of anxiety? Um, what makes you feel a little uncomfortable? And then we'll talk about the importance of being able to identify artworks. Everyone knows this. This is the Mona Lisa. Why is she important? When was it made? What was it made of and on? Um, who was the artist? Um, what do you know about her? Do you know that underneath all of the layers of dirt and varnish, she actually looks like this, but she's covered with so much dirt and varnish and smoke that the, it has dulled all of the colors. We'll talk about the history of that and why we feel it necessary to smush ourselves into the Louvre in order to get a picture of the Mona Lisa, even though she's really small. We'll talk about form. What does this look like? How does this make you feel? What it, what do you think about abstracted art? Um, and so we will talk about form. We'll talk about the way that, uh, that artists create um, compositions. We'll talk about the fact that this is a pyramidal composition, and this is a pyramidal composition. So we have a double pyramidal composition. We have a wonderful horizon line. Um, and we have a very um, monochromatic palette. We will talk about a, a, um, additive versus subtractive sculpture, sculptures where you add things together to make a sculpture, and sculpture where you subtract things away to make a sculpture. We'll talk about proportion. Did you know that this statue is 17 feet tall? Why did we make a 17 foot tall past statue? We'll talk about context. What was going on in the world when Picasso made this? And is this indicative of the Spanish Civil War? Do you Can you tell that there were horrible human atrocities happening and that this was Picasso's response to it? Um, 
and we'll talk about why things look the way that they look and what their purpose is. We'll talk about why this is a teacup covered with fur. Um, we'll talk about why we have um, crosses with circles around them. Um, and we will talk about two really important um, words here. Um, we will talk about um, convention, why things look the way they are and why they look like things that have been made before, but also innovation, why things look different. Um, what can you tell happened between here and here? Why does this one look so different from that one? Um, and that's innovation. What did we learn how to do differently? Then we go back to our PowerPoints um, and we talk about the language of art. Um, and that language of art is really important. And it's not something I'm going to expect you to know the very first day. It's not something that you will be able to um, fill out a sheet of paper by the end of the first week and say that you understand all of the language of art. But we're going to talk about um, important things. And this, you know, I said in class, we will talk about important and sometimes controversial topics. We will deal with sexuality. We'll deal with war. We'll deal with religion. We will deal with why we do nudes. We We'll deal with why paintings are violent. We'll deal with all these kinds of things. Um, we will look at the elements and principles of art. We'll look at that composition and arrangement, depth and perspective. We will look at all of these art elements, line, form, shape, space, perspective, color, texture, and value. So those are your elements that I talked about a few minutes ago. And we'll talk about principles, most importantly being that scale and proportion and that emphasis or focal point. Where are we expected to look at things and how the picture is arranged range, that composition and, again, perspective and proportion, perspective and proportion. We'll look at additive versus subtractive sculpture. We'll look at high relief versus low relief. And we will learn all of these terms. What's the difference between a plan and an elevation and a section and a facade when we're dealing with architecture? And we'll learn all of these words as we work our way through the curriculum. Okay. Now that we have done that, that's the end of the first um, looking at art video. There will be a second looking at art video, and then there will be a nine block video. So that's the end of the video to make up for um, a, an attendance absence during the first week of school. Um, talk to you in our next video.